Headboard, custom design. Nightstands, custom design. Meh, meh. Speaking of sliding doors, even the toilet has a sliding door. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Restless Living channel. My name is Christian Trambedak and today we're gonna experience an extraordinary cedar barn house named Villa Brink, featuring amazing architecture and some incredible custom design furniture and inventory. Brink is conceptualized as a narrow disc in the terrain and it is a modern reinterpretation of a classic longhouse. With its length of 37 meters, the house is quite spectacular and features three volumes including home, design office, modern atrium and a workshop. Oh wow, <laughs> look, this is beautiful. An old school Porsche Targa. Then you know already from the first minute you walk in the entrance that this will be something special. Bit of classical, but definitely modern, as you can see here by the entrance. But let's just head inside and check the rest out. Hello, <laughs> welcome. This is the entrance, and the entrance is basically like a tunnel because it has this 180 meter width and then it just continues straight throughout leading towards a floor to ceiling window. Because I mean, you don't want to forget that you're right in the middle of the forest, right? And then you have this beautiful bench here. Wow, mirrors both on the sides and on the back. Just gives a little bit more depth to it. And then it's rose colored. It's very bold, different, right? A little bit more detail and then lots of closet space. Douglas wood just works so well with the natural stone on the floor and then this dark acoustic ceiling. Very simple but I think it's so powerful with these design elements that makes it stand out because I mean it is custom just for this house in particular. Let's just head inside to the main areas. So this is the main part of the house. Kitchen and living in one. Dining of course, not to forget. And as you can see with the kitchen, following the same design principles as the hallway out there with the same Douglas wood. I mean, it gives just so much warmth because when you have natural stone and so on, it can become a little bit cold. But with this, you just keep this atmosphere, the warmth and the beautiful with the brass details. You see these transitions from the cabinet wood to natural stone surface. And then you have these two bar stools. So the guests can conversing while the owners are preparing the feast. <laughs> That's amazing. And then when you're ready for the big feast, you can jump right over here for the dining area. Lots of space. You're basically uh, taking advantage of the length of this volume, right? And you have these beautiful lamps giving a very soft light, a little bit more homey atmosphere, right? The living area is kept quite simple, but I think one of the key features is this fireplace. Because as you see now, it's basically enclosed, very modern itself, but then you can actually open it. And then you see the glass is basically concealed in the top here. And then it's just an open fireplace, giving it a lot of atmosphere, right? While the living area is quite contained, you have these sliding doors. Ah, heavy. 
that opens up towards the outside. So of course, when you are living in a place like this in the middle of the forest, you of course don't really want to focus so much on the living area because you have this amazing outdoor area where you can just step outside, breathe in the fresh air and just enjoy the treetops. But I think a little bit later we will go outside and you will explore it all. Trust me. So even though this is a completely open space, everything can basically be concealed by sliding doors. There's sliding doors everywhere. So the different sections can be closed depending on what mood you're in. And this is a sliding door to the private section. And the first thing we see here is the master bathroom. Wow. Look at this. The sink is in fact, the same stone as you have on the floor. But if you look closely, it doesn't look the same. And why is that? Well, it is because a big piece of stone was sent down too easily to Vesselimami, and then they cut out this amazing sink. It looks different, but it is in fact the same. The mirror is so beautiful because of the hidden light that is continuing all the way around, basically framing it and highlighting the mirror. Speaking of sliding doors, even the toilet has a sliding door. And then when you close it, you can just enter this beautiful bath. Wow, lots of space, natural stone on the walls and on the ceiling. Ceiling, no, floor. <laughs> floor is the floor. The ceiling is dark and it's acoustic and it's not even close to be stone. <laughs> you get what I mean. You know, with all the natural stone, as I said before, it can become a little bit cold. But these brass details really break it and create this contrast. What? <laughs> you got cramp? <laughs> Wow, look at this master bedroom. Here you really take advantage of the ceiling height, right? And the darkness, some people they think that it's basically putting a lid on top, but in this case, I think it really opens up. It makes it look even larger than it is. Imagine waking up right here being embraced by these forest views. Is there anything better than that? I don't think so. What do you think? Headboard, custom design, nightstands, custom design, and Douglas wood on the floor. It starts here framing basically that this is the private section. It needs to be more cozy, a little bit more warm. Because this is after all where you're sleeping, right? so contained also in the colors and so on, but it's still, what? <laughs> Guys, those cramps, the camera, the camera girl has cramps. <laughs> She's not used to filming, that's why. She cannot even, <laughs> she cannot even keep the camera still. I'm right here, <laughs> capture me. Before we get outside, I just want to show you something really cool and by really cool I mean really cool just come with me <laughs> I was tackled by a chair <laughs> just come with me through the whole length of this house we're going to the opposite side to the kids section and I know what you are probably thinking now kids section ah, is that really that interesting but in this case you are in for a treat it is a kids bedroom in two floors. Where's the bed? <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's up here. Two floors, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Wow. So you can sleep upstairs and then downstairs you have a small desk that is basically continuing from the staircase itself and then this incredible window seat where you can sit reading a book and just enjoy the trees outside. 
Imagine even if it's raining, it was raining a little bit earlier today. It is just a calming feeling just to sit here, listen to the rain outside. Wow. But this is, this almost feels like a small apartment itself, right? And that was the whole idea behind the kids' bedrooms, that they should feel like that they have their own small unit. Honestly, I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> to free up a lot of the space from inside, if you notice, there were no, there were no closets. Because the closets have been moved out here. And then, of course, when the kids get older and so on, just like in the other end, you have the sliding doors to just close it off. And then they are completely alone here. They even have their own bathroom, which contrasts very much to the other one that you saw earlier. I really like how Bruno has integrated this terrazzo for this bathroom. It becomes a little bit more playful. And then still you have you no know, darkless wood to give the warmth. And then you have these organic shapes to create a little bit of contrast, right? Also with the sink, as you see, a beautiful bath as well, where the tiles continue, brass details. Nice. <laughs> I'm walking into everything today. Gosh. Meh. 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 So cute. <laughs> Some cozy goat love. <laughs> well, we are on the countryside. You know, I even strapped on <laughs> these rubber boots and now we are by the goats. If we talk about details of this place, even the goat shelter, it has basically been made in the same style as the rest of the house. An old bicycle shed where the top, the ceiling, the roof has been removed and then re been replaced by sinus steel that has been basically covered circular. Yes. And then with this cedar wood, you know, patinating very nicely, getting gray over time. Basically the same as the facade here. You have the same cedar wood. You can see all these architectural details. Instead of just keeping like a naked wall, you just attach a bit of bench here. So during the morning when the sun is here, you can just sit here, have your small breakfast, enjoying the goats. <laughs> That's beautiful. And then this second pathway here, leading towards the office space of Bruno. So to take advantage of these 37 meters of longhouse, you have the private section with your private residence, and then you have an office space where clients can basically jump up this pathway and enter to a separate place. Bruno has his own design office right here where he can sit on his chair looking out, getting inspired from watching the forest. And with the long house, you make sure that you have views from every single room that you're in, because everything is just facing the forest. So no matter where you're standing in the house, you can look out through the glass and you will be able to see the treetops. A lot of the same elements, of course, continuing the style with the natural stone and so on. And then you also have a little loft space up here that you can use for whatever. I don't think Bruno has thought about what he's gonna use it for yet. They basically just moved in, so they're gonna figure that out. You can really see that Bruno is a big design enthusiast. I mean, he's a designer by profession. Because all these details, you know, from the fireplace, from the cabinets, from the ceilings, from the floors, from framing the windows, so on. It's just beautiful. And I think the whole idea with separating private, you know, your own home, and then the work office like this, basically taking advantage of the full range of those 37 meters of the house, 
it's quite interesting. Next to the office is the terrace. And I mean, look at this tunnel, right? With the wood stack and so on. I mean, this overhang is so beautiful. It's just framing the entire landscape, leading us towards this perfect dining setup. Quite convenient if you have people over, right? You can just sit here throughout the whole evening, just enjoying your food, enjoying the sounds, enjoying the view. Love it. And look at how expansive it all is. It's so big. Depending on the trees and the light, you can use the terrace in different ways throughout the day. If you want a bit of sun during the afternoon, you can lie down there. If you just want to converse in the shadow, you can sit here or over there. It's funny. When you think that there could be no more details. Wait. <laughs> I'm literally walking into everything today. <laughs> I was trying to say, when you thought that there were no more details to be found, you just get amazed once again. Cutouts for the trees. You don't want to cut down any trees, right? You want to maintain them that you want to preserve. And then basically the tree itself becomes part of the terrace instead of separated. And that is the kind of, you know, integration between property and landscape. A lovely outdoor shower and a wilderness bath. Gosh, is it cold? It's a little bit cold. Oh, but it's so beautiful. I think this is the heater, maybe, for the water. It all just works towards the narrative, right? Of having this oasis out in the middle of the forest. And I mean, just come here and look at the atrium from here. But I think the atrium is probably much nicer when the sun is going down and the intimacy of the light inside turns on and becomes an experience in itself. So this is the family's favorite place the atrium, all the glass just surrounding it, giving viewpoints towards both the sky, but also on the other hand, the forest. Automatic closing up in the ceiling, giving a bit of fresh air inside. And I mean, when it gets a little bit too hot, you can just open doors both ways. So the breeze can basically just go through and then you can sit here, enjoy the late evenings. You can even eat here, you know, with a little bit of heat from the nice fireplace. So even during the winter, this is still a safe spot. An atrium is known for plants, right? So you have a wide selection actually, giving a lot of life. You have small tomatoes, you have an more than 100 year old olive tree. How amazing is that? Wow. Sometimes there is coming yellow dust from it. So there's just like yellow dust everywhere. But I think it's just such a monumental part of this atrium. This is proper nice. I mean, even the dog seems to enjoy it. <laughs> Say hi to Terry. Now when the sun has set, this house just really shows itself from its best side. I mean, look at the lights of the kitchen area, the terrace lighting, and also the light out in the forest. There's a small bench down there. You can sit by the small bulb lights, lights on the trees. It just creates such a calm atmosphere. I mean, everything just shines. Look at the, be in the bedroom here. Just lighted up by the interior light. 
bouncing back and forth with the exterior darkness. It's so beautiful. I'm getting this feeling that I just really want to get into that wilderness bath. Should we do it? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you see, this is what it's about. I finally understand what Bono means by having this oasis right here in the middle of the forest. <sighs> nice bath during this beautiful evening. So great. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Make sure to check out Bruno Jakobsen. And as always, smash the like button, subscribe to our channel, and then I'll see you soon. Bye. <laughs> One take.